When a lonely housewife witnesses a murder, she becomes the next target and another case for the equalizer. It wasn't something I planned or anything. Don't move. The man who took you up to that apartment was a professional killer. I thought we finished when we started. <laughs> the Equalizer. Wednesday's odds on favorite at 9 on Central. Life in the town has always been better for the healthy influence of the country, which is why townsfolk enjoy the real buttery taste of a low-fat spread called Delight. Delight actually contains real buttermilk for a real buttery taste, but it has only half the fat of butter or margarine. Yes, Delight's come to town, bringing the taste of the country without the fat of the land. financial future. Or you can talk to Allied Dunbar. Allied Dunbar's insurance, pension and saving schemes have already helped secure the future for over a million people. So for practical advice, wouldn't you be better off talking to Allied Dunbar? Personal financial guidance. The moment a pea's been picked, the flavour starts to go. Which is why at Bird's Eye, we freeze every single pea within two and a half hours of picking it. So when you pick a Bird's Eye pea, the only thing it's bursting with is flavour. family car. Although Arthur's eaten cat and meat for years, he recently gave us an ultimatum. Put more meat in it or else. So we did. To be honest, when he saw it, Arthur said he didn't believe us. But it wasn't long before we had him eating his words. Cat meat is now 100% meat in jelly. Anything else is a poor substitute. Recently, Shell developed a new petrol that can improve the performance of your car. Formula Shell. It contains a spark aider, which improves the efficiency of each spark from the plug, making your car more responsive. Only Formula Shell has the spark aider. I want to break free. New Formula Shell. It can improve the performance of your car. The driver wants to know if Omsk is this way. No, it's the other way. Book through Pickford's travel and you'll often know more than the locals do. Don't take a chance on missing your favourite programmes. Take TV Times. And this week, the big changes at Crossroads. Don't miss it. Get TV Times. There's late night sport on Central tonight with the ice skating from Yugoslavia at 11.30 and the Blackthorn darts at 10 past 12. Now it's news time. The vicar says the judge is confused about burglary and rape. Kinnock. You're incompetent. Thatcher, you're hysterical. The Americans test a nuclear device. The Soviets hang fire. In Ulster, the McGlinchey funeral, there's a fight. And 
England surprise their fans, they're almost in the finals. Good evening. All three victims in the Ealing Vicarage rape and burglary case have protested that the sentences by Mr Justice Leonard are too short. The rape victim herself said she was shocked that the judge seemed to treat rape and burglary as equal crimes. The Home Office Minister, Mr David Meller, says he hopes new government powers which would allow the prosecution to appeal will stop future controversies over rape sentences. Yesterday, Martin McCall and Christopher Byrne were sentenced to ten years and eight years for rape and other offences. Today, Robert Horscroft, aged 34, got 14 years for burglaries and for attacking the Ealing Vicar. In court, Robert Horscroft was described as the leader of the gang. The judge said he was aware of the publicity the case had been given today, but said there was no question of Horscroft being sentenced in order to pacify public opinion. Whilst accepting he was not involved in the rape, Mr Justice Leonard told Horscroft, you must take the blame. You were the most experienced and oldest. As he was led away, Horscroft cried angrily, what about the rapists? By any standards, this was a particularly vicious attack. The woman victim stayed away from court today for the single reason that she was so upset at the sentences. She said the judge had no understanding of what she had been through. Prebendary Michael Saywood echoed that view. I think we've been very concerned as a family about a phrase that was used yesterday by the judge about the trauma not being so very great. The trauma has been very great. Uh, the girl in question and her sister have both of them been having psychiatric treatment for some time. The young man who was involved has a hearing problem now. I have been uh, seeing a neurologist quite regularly for some time. What we were concerned about was that no attempt was given in court with regard to the medical evidence con connected with those of us who were the victims. So you feel as if the judge has taken this case much too lightly? I don't know that I wish to say much too lightly. I am concerned that he has given greater weight to crimes against property than against violence against the person. And he expanded on that later. Part of the problem, I think, was that if we'd gone to court, uh, you know, and, and the girl concerned had sat there sobbing her heart out, one almost feels that there would have been more sympathy because she was able to sit there and take an interest in what was going on. Uh, and because uh, at least one of the counsel, the, one of the barristers, uh, very much dismissed the thing, you know, the family's all right sort of thing. And of course the judge's phrase at the end was really, I think, the last straw. I think it's fair to say I and my family are shocked and appalled. The other man injured in the attack feels equally strongly. I think that it should be castration. You're taking away the weapon that was used and you're taking away their life, making them miserable for what they did to the victim. It frightens off these kind of people from ever people that even contemplate doing it to anybody might be frightened off of doing it if that's the way their mind works. What about yourself? How do you feel about the men who did it? I feel disgusted. I cannot forgive men like that. A year ago, the courts received guidelines on rape sentencing from the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Lane. Since then, the number of associated jail terms exceeding five years has doubled. Those guidelines recommend a starting point of eight years when rape is committed by two men acting together or when a man has broken into a victim's home. In addition, the sentence should be increased if excessive violence was used, if a weapon was involved, if the victim was subjected to further sexual indignity. All three points, 22-year-old Martin McCall and Christopher Byrne admitted. But McCall received a five-year sentence on the rape charge and a further five years for burglary. Byrne was sentenced to three years for rape and five years for burglary. With parole, their sentences could be more than halved. In addition, 34-year-old Robert Horscroft, who admitted offences including burglary and grievous bodily harm, was sentenced to 14 years in jail. When the judge sentenced the two rapists, he told them an adequate sentence for the horror of their offence would be disproportionate for their age of 22. And also in the phrase that's hurt the victims, he said the trauma was not so great. Mr Justice Leonard is 60. After Oxford and the Coldstream Guards, he was called to the bar in 1951. In the 70s, he served on a committee reviewing indecency and obscenity. By 1978, he was what's called the Common Sergeant of London, the second most permanent judge at the Old Bailey. His last headline-hitting case was last month in the trial of Inspector Lovelock over the shooting and wounding of Mrs Gross. For a 22-year-old, I think it was, a sentence of 10 years' imprisonment is a substantial period in custody. And in a case like this, a plea of guilty is a substantial mitigation, saving the victim as it does that awful trauma of giving evidence and having to relive 
the, the awful events through which she, uh, which she had to endure. Our feeling is that there should be a right of reference of such cases to the Court of Appeal. So the Court of Appeal could comment in the public interest on how such cases should be dealt with in the future. That's what we're pushing for in the Criminal Justice Bill. I hope Parliament will accept those proposals as both sensible and overdue. So Legally, this case is over. As all three of those convicted have pleaded guilty, appeals seem unlikely, as do any public pronouncements by either the Lord Chief Justice or the Lord Chancellor. Michael Macmillan, ITN, at the Old Bailey. Mrs Thatcher and Mr Kinnock attacked each other angrily in the Commons over the special branch raids on the BBC in Scotland, when police confiscated all five other programmes in the Secret Society series, as well as the one on the Zircon spy satellite. The Prime Minister accused the Labour leader of attacking the police. He accused her of killing the rule of law. In the emergency debate on the raids, the government won with a majority of 151. After greeting some children in Downing Street, the noisiest and angriest scenes of this parliamentary session were waiting for the Prime Minister of the Commons. A furious row which took up all but three minutes of the question she answered. The Prime Minister said once again that the police raids had nothing to do with her, and of course Mr Kinnock had agreed there was a national security problem. I would have thought that having agreed that a vital matter of national security was at stake, the right honourable gentleman would also have agreed that the police were right to investigate how the information was leaked. Instead, he and his party are now once again attacking the police. Oh, the Prime Minister has good cause to know that I will do everything to safeguard national security. But she also has good reason to know that I will never protect her against the effects of her incompetence nor protect her against her, the effects of the injustice which she perpetrates. The role of Sir Michael Havers, the Attorney General, head down in the back of his car as he arrived at the Commons, was much discussed in the emergency debate. And while Shadow Home Secretary Gerald Kaufman accepted that Sir Michael had acted independently, he had consulted ministers and taken note of their views. The result, Mr Kaufman said, police action with the Prime Minister's hallmark all over it. She will authorise any action, however extreme or destructive of our, of our liberties, to revenge herself on those who inconvenience her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the reason for the introduction into Britain in Glasgow last weekend of the three o'clock knock. For the Alliance, Dr David Owen said the warrants in Scotland had been far too widely drawn. Why had just 27 items been taken from the New Statesman offices in London, he asked the Home Secretary, and three van loads from the BBC in Scotland? I think we'd better see, hadn't we, what is found. Uh, I can't explain that because I haven't seen the material. We're in the middle of an investigation. No one can seriously argue that this uh, breach of security should not be investigated. We'd better see what material was produced and whether a prosecution and charges happen or not. Labour and the Alliance kept up the pressure to the end. Why had tapes of all six programmes been taken by the police and not just the one on Zircon? Was this a question of revenge against the BBC? And when the minister winding up for the government, Mr Rifkind, gave answers that the opposition didn't like, the debate ended as question time had begun in uproar. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster. The United States carried out another underground nuclear weapon test in the Nevada desert today. The Soviet Union had said any test would mean it would end its self-imposed freeze on nuclear testing. Tonight, Russian television reported the test, but didn't carry any official Soviet response. But the Soviet news agency TASS said America had opened the door to redoubled Soviet testing. It said President Reagan was now on the brink of the nuclear precipice. The United States has now conducted 20 underground tests since the Soviet Union announced their moratorium 18 months ago. The latest explosion was not expected until Thursday. Soviet arms negotiator Yuli Voronsov warning again this morning the Russians would resume testing if the Americans went ahead. Mr. Voronsov had a warm welcome for his American counterpart Max Campbellman in Geneva last month. But on Capitol Hill in Washington, Democrats were quick to warn today's test would hinder progress towards an arms agreement. And the window for that arms control agreement we had hoped was there has now been closed. It's a very sad day. And we can be sure that the Soviets will explode their own in the near future, and we will in fact have made the world a more dangerous place to live in because of the actions of this president and this country today. 
The president himself seemed unconcerned by the controversy as he prepared to consider another crucial decision on arms, cheerfully throwing snowballs as his senior aides gathered at the White House to discuss the early deployment of Star Wars. Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger has been arguing for such a move. He believes parts of the system could be operational by the early 1990s. Secretary of State George Shultz is said to oppose what he believes would be a clear breach of the 1972 ABM Treaty. The president, caught again between his two key advisers, made it clear in his State of the Union address last week that he wants to press ahead with the Strategic Defense Initiative. SDI will go forward. Ronald Reagan now faces stiff opposition from the new Democrat-controlled Congress over nuclear testing and spending on SDI. But observers say he wants to ensure Star Wars is far enough ahead to survive any change of policy by the next president. Tim Hewitt, News at 10, Washington. 17,000 Czechoslovak troops have been taking part in winter manoeuvres watched for the first time by Western military observers. They were invited to Czechoslovakia as a result of last September's Stockholm Accord. Though the Czech tanks and military equipment are not of the latest design, the presence of the observers is regarded as significant by Western governments. Five more American warships were ordered today to join the task force off the Lebanese coast. More than 20 ships carrying 2,000 assault troops are within 50 miles of Lebanon, but officials in Washington say it's unlikely they'll use force to rescue American hostages held there. In Beirut, there's still no sign of Mr. Terry Waite, who disappeared two weeks ago. One report said he's being held in West Beirut. Scuffles between police and mourners broke out at the funeral of Mrs. Mary McGlinchey, the wife of the Irish National Liberation Army leader, Dominic McGlinchey. She was shot dead at the weekend, and it's thought her murder was part of an INLA feud. McGlinchey wasn't allowed out of the Republic's Port Leisha prison for the funeral in County Londonderry. He's serving ten years for shooting and wounding Irish policemen. Relatives of Mary McGlinchey had appealed for no paramilitary presence, asking for a private service. The RUC was...